kind of a game. So I already managed to deploy all the VMs, but the last one, <laughs> in the internal OpenStack, it's, it's not working properly and it doesn't want to deploy the last Boston execution node. But it doesn't matter, we can continue with just one execution node on Boston. And once that the OpenStack starts to work properly, we can expand this platform to add a new execution node, that's a simple operation. So let's make an overview of our current state. So we want to reach to this final topology with two control plane nodes, two execution nodes, and then two hub nodes to two different data centers. And on those data centers, we are going to have two execution nodes for per each of the data centers. And um, right now we only have these two nodes on the Ansible Automation Platform and they are actually running Tower 3.8 yet. But we already moved all the data we had on, uh, on the REL 7 base Tower 3.8. So now we are going to start to upgrade the cluster. So I already downloaded the new installer and I have the new installer on one directory and the old one on the other. And I will start the process copying the inventory, the old inventory to the new directory. Yeah, I want to override it. So let's check what do we have here. Oh, and I already created um, the YAML file with host bars to provide the registry username and password because my old inventory doesn't have those. So the installer have a pretty good, pretty handy feature and is that you can run setup on the platform 2.1 installer using a platform 1.2 inventory and it will create a proposal for you. So, oh, first of all, it's going to update Ansible Core for me. This node is the Tower 1 node and it was running with Ansible 2.9, but for the install installation process, we need Ansible Core 2.12. So the first thing is going to be that. And then we have a pretty early failure that's saying that the installer detected an old inventory format and we created a proposal for you. So this is pretty handy, especially when you are doing an in-place upgrade because it's going to create a proposal including the ISO nodes and offering you a, sim a seamless upgrade for those ISO nodes. The problem is that you need Tower 3.8 on Rel8 to make this and I didn't have it. So I doing the side-by-side -side version, but since I started with the uh, with a tower 3.8, I can use this. So now we can see that the installer already modified some things for me and created some others. Okay, no problem. And here we have our automation controller. Well, right now tower, what is going to be the automation controller? group. So the automation controller group is the control plane one and as we can see here we want to use control nodes for control type nodes for all of the nodes. So what does this mean that we are these nodes are not going to run any automations from the customer. They are just going to control everything, run the internal jobs, the project updates that the customer's automation jobs are going to run somewhere else. And that somewhere else is the execution node. So to make this happen, we have to define a new host bar. Now nah, I'll do it in a different way. So let's define some bars for this group. And all of them are going to be node type control and then 
will set up the peers here. What are the peers? The peers are the way to define the automation mesh connection. So if I define peers on automation controller, that means that automation controller is not going to listen for incoming connections, but it's going to connect to somewhere else, to the pairs, to connect to the automation mesh. And then we can start adding our execution nodes. So we can see here that we have two execution nodes on the main data center, and other two execution nodes that are just hub nodes. They are not going to execute anything. They are just going to forward the jobs for us, but those kind of nodes are defined on the group execution nodes. And then we have yet another four execution nodes that are going to be the replacement for the old isolated nodes we had on each of the data centers. Uh, this one didn't deploy, so we can forget about that one, but otherwise we need one two, three, four, five, six, seven execution nodes. So I'm going to start to set up here the execution nodes. So we have two on the same data center that are the, the execution plane that we have on the main data center. And let me copy properly the piece. Okay. And th those are going to be no type execution, but that's the default value. So I'm not going to set up the value. And then we have two hop nodes, the Portland one, and those two hub nodes have interfaces on both networks. So the Portland one, that is and this one, and the one for Boston, this one. And these two ones, I'm going to use no type hope on them. So now we can start building the peers. So the automation controller, the control plane, is going to be connected to all the nodes. No, sorry, to I know how to do it this properly. So we are going to define those here again. And now I can use the group for the peers. from the control plane because we need to control connect to the hub nodes. So we have the main data center hub nodes without this and the main data center execution nodes to group those. And now we need to define yet another three execution nodes. Two for four, four, four one that they are on this network. No, Portland is on 10, sorry. And another two that are on Portland and now Boston. On Boston, we only have one yet. And now we have to define the peers to reach it. Here. So how are we going to connect here? We can choose different ways to do this. 
we can use here. So the 36 one, 36. Okay, I'm going to do again another thing. Right, for one execution nodes, and we have two execution nodes here, and for line, the second execution node on for line, and then we have how it was called on uh, Boston, so Boston execution nodes. And in Boston, for now, we only have one. So, the first automation controller is going to connect to the execution nodes on the main data center and to the home nodes on the main data center. And then, 36, 36 is the Portland one, so this is going to connect to Portland Portland execution nodes and this one is going to connect to Boston execution nodes. As a review, we have automation controller, we have the bars, two nodes here that are type control and appears to connect to the main execution plane on the main data center and to the home nodes that we need to reach to the other execution nodes. On the execution nodes group, we defined a total of seven different nodes. And most of them are no type hybrid, uh, no type execution nodes, sorry. Uh, since that's the default one, I'm not going to define any host bar there. And hope. And the node types and these two nodes are the hub nodes that we need to reach the rest of our infra. And then we have a database and we have the usual bars that you need to run the installer. Then we will need on platform 2.1 additionally you you need the registry username, the registry password, and the registry URL, I think that it's called the third one. Let's give me a second, I'm going to check, because I think that I didn't define that one on my credential file, so I'm going to define it here. Uh, I'm checking the exact name, I think that it's registry underscore URL, but I'm not totally sure. Yeah, it's registry URL equals registry.redhat.io. So now I'm ready to start moving from my two nodes here, from my two nodes, tower 308 to my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nodes, because the last one didn't want to, we can, nine nodes, as well automation platform 2.1. And from those nine nodes, we are going to run the Ovson 4, two are going to be the control plane, and the other ones are just forwarding boxes. And let's save this, and I'll start running the installer. I have to provide a new inventory that is the one that I already set up. Um, okay, I'll push enter and we'll see, we'll see again later.